Hey everyone, and welcome to part 10 of making an HTTP server in Java. In the last part, we stopped after processing the others. And in this part, we are going to look at handling of the files that we will be serving. By the end of this video and the next one, we will have our service serve a website like this. Pretty basic, yes, but this is the core of everything else. So let's start straight away by creating this website, if we want to call it that. It has a web page with some text and an image, which will also be served by our server. And also, we serve a fav icon for the browsers that request them. Let's create a folder called webroot at the root of our project. And inside, let's create a file called index.html and make a simple web page with a title, a header, a subheader, and let's add an image. Now let me add this logo.png file and also add the fav icon, which will be interesting later. Now let's take care of reading files. Let's start by editing our config and pointing the web root to the correct location. I'll put the complete path here, but later we'll change to a relative path. Now let's create a package called IO and a class called web root handler. Let's add a class level file variable called web root, which we will point to the web root folder. In the constructor, we instantiate that variable and check to see if it exists and if it is a directory. If not, we throw an exception called webroot not found exception, which we will now create. And let's add the exception to the constructor signature. Let's create the same package in our test context and also the JUnit class webroot handler test and write a few test cases to test our constructor. First, let's test if everything works out for an existing path. Then let's create a test for a given path that does not exist. Perfect. And now let's create a test for a relative path that is good. And that also works and a test for a relative path that does not exist. And we are done with testing the constructor. Let's continue with the web root handler. Anything we are going to ask the web root to do will be using a relative path, that is the request target from the HTTP request, and also the web root file that we have just created. One thing that we will need to do is check if a provided relative path ends with a slash or not. So let's write a method that does this check and make it private. And now let's update the JUnit. Let's modify the before class method to create a web root handler that we will use for all tests related to methods. And let's use reflection to call this private method. And let's write a couple of tests for that method. Let's not forget to set the reflected method to accessible as we are talking about a private method. And this one test is done. Let's write a couple more. and a few more for the paths that end with a slash. And that's it. Now, another method that we are going to need is to check if a relative path actually exists inside of the web root folder. We do this by comparing the canonical path, which resolves path traversing issues. Let's update the JUnit to add checks for this. Let's reflect also this method and write some tests. 
So I test for index.html, which I know exists. I do the path also in this different way. I test for a file that does not exist. And I try to traverse out of the web root folder. And all this looking good. Now that we have these two private methods, we can make use of them for the remaining public methods that we are going to need to have. The first one we'll be writing is to get the mind type of a file for a relative path. Let's write that. And the first thing we check is if the relative path ends with a slash. If it does, we append index.html to it. Then we check if it exists and is reachable. If not, we throw a file not found exception. Now we get the MIME type using file name map provided by URL connection class. This is just to avoid us from having to create a map of extensions and corresponding MIME types. If we can't resolve the MIME type this way, we return an application octet stream. This method will be used to populate a header called content type and it is specified in section 4.3.3 of RFC 7231 that if a header is missing, a client may assume that this is the default. So we'll just send the default if uh, on the server side we can't determine it, which will be the case for the fab icon file. Now we write a bunch of tests for this method. And let's move on. Now we need a method that returns a byte array of the contents of a file for a relative path. We start by doing the same test as before for the slash and reachability of the file. And then we use a file input stream to read that file. If there's a problem reading the file, we throw a read file exception that we now create. And this method might land us in some trouble in the future if we are trying to serve really large files, like over 2 gigabytes. But honestly, this will do for now. Let's write a couple of test cases for this method. This is all good. And now let's change our configuration file to use the relative path instead of the full path we had there. In the next part of this video tutorial series, we'll be putting all of this together and we'll have the server running for the first time with real files. I hope you enjoyed and I see you in the next video.